Good to see you, man. Good to see you. How are you? Good. I've been seeing a lot of you lately. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, I like it. Uh, and, uh, and thanks for spending the New Year's Eve. Uh, oh, cool. Yeah. I had nothing else to do. <laughs> <laughs> a really lonely life. You, were, you just happen to be free on this day. Yeah. Um, when you look back on 2012, how, how would you characterize your year? Well, I mean, personally, it was a, it was a terrific year. It was it was kind of like I I, I embarked on some journeys, and I and I and I I was optimistic enough this year to, to like take on some things that I might not have in years previous. That's a big year for you. I mean, you're you're getting back on screen. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. That's the thing about about being optimistic enough to to take on some new things and and. I just, I just did, uh, uh, in the last few years, I've done some episodes of Good Wife, and I did the Kirby Enthusiasm, and, and I'm just in a new play. I mean, I found a way to make drugs work for me a little bit better, and, and, and I'm just emboldened by, by those experiences, and, and I just thought, why am I not doing what I do? Why am I not doing uh, the thing that, that is giving me the most success and the most pleasure outside of my family? Was the moment you go on screen in this character, uh, and playing a guy with Parkinson's, like that's, that's a statement in and of itself. That's a different reality for, for television. It's right. bigger than just a guy in a TV show. Well, yeah, but it, and, and what's cool about that, and what's cool about the, 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 the reaction that people have to that with me, whether it's on the show as this character, as this essentially disabled character, or, or, or handicapped character, however you want to put it, somewhat differently situated, um, yeah, that's 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 cool and that's new, um, but for me, that that that's the part of the character I don't have to think about. <laughs> I mean, that's that's I don't have to I don't have to play that. So, <laughs> so it's it's easy for me. You have a real sense of humor about uh, you know Parkinson's and the way you you present it publicly. The Kerber enthusiasm stuff was unbelievable. You know. Oh, thanks. Oh, Jesus Christ! What the hell? Did you shake that up on purpose? Parkinson's. When, when Larry called me up, and I don't know Larry that well, I've met him a few times. But he called me up and asked me if I'd do it and, and pitched the concept to me, and I said, this is great. Because the way they work on that show is they, um, there's an idea, there's a, there's a series of points you want to get to in the scene, but how you get there is up to you. Yeah. It's all ad lib, it's all improv. And, and it was just great for me because I don't get a chance to do that much. And, and, and it just worked out great. Well, he did it in a humorous way, in the way that Rush Limbaugh really attacked you. Yeah. How do you well, feel about that? Again, I don't control how people respond to it. So, so I, I just let that go. However people react is how they react. It's how they zone their own thing. It's a half time, it's their, if they react, like if people go, how are you, are you okay? That's their fear. Right. You don't have to protect me. You don't have to step in for me and, 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 and say, don't you know what this guy's dealing with? Or, you know, just everybody chill. Yeah. And with Rush, it's different, though. That's no, Rush, uh, Rush, well, Rush, I mean, he, you got to remember that he's dealing with a really small base. He's not dealing with a big, and that was the part, that was a mistake the Republicans made, was they thought this guy represented their, their constituency, and he doesn't. He's a, he's a fanatic. Yeah. And he's a showman, and he's, he's just, I mean, he didn't care about me, or he didn't care about stem cells, he didn't care about Parkinson's, he cared about how would he flame up his base, mm -hmm. and what would he say. And so, the thing about fighting him is, you can't fight him, because who are you trying to win over? And anybody reasonable and, and responsible gets that you're right. Yeah. So to go into the public arena and, and fight them is like trying to win over people that already are on your side. So you just kind of go, oh, well, yeah, let's let him make noise in his own echo chamber. I want to read you a quote. This is from you at the uh, Senate Appropriations Subcommittee hearing. This is in D.C. in 99. You said, in my 40s, I can expect challenges most people wouldn't face until their 70s and 80s, if ever. But with your help, if we all do everything we can to eradicate this disease, when I'm in my 50s, I'll be dancing at my children's weddings. Yeah, I mean, I feel that way. In the sense that, that, um, that I feel that a lot of the things that we're doing at the foundation are going to pay off. And I feel like there's, 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 there's stuff that's happening outside of us that's also interesting stuff with, with figuring out ways to, to, to live longer and to live better. My symptoms, as, as, as moving around as I am right now, I mean, this is nothing. Yeah. This is, I found ways to control uh, what really gave me a hard time three or four years ago. Uh, dyskinesias that were really bad and rocking. If you look at some interviews I did, they were really, and, and the political ads I did, it, it, I had a much different situation than I have now, which is one of the reasons I, I feel good about going back to work. I can sit in a chair and I can have a conversation. I couldn't do that five years ago. If you think about how much, like when, when you were first, not when you were first diagnosed, but when you first started to take on this, this, this concept of foundation, how much 
how much was Parkinson's in the public space? How much was it a part of fundraising? It wasn't in the public space very much at all because it was it was con it was considered uh, a situation that 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 affected the elderly and didn't affect younger people. So when I kind of brought it out there that it affected younger people, not that that made it any more worthy, it just made it, it just changed it in people's minds. Right. And, um, and so that was a big thing. And, and when, I, when I went public with it, I had some real misgivings. I, 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 I didn't know whether that was something I really wanted to do. And then once I did it, the genie was out of the bottle and, and, and I had this feeling of kind of desperation, like, oh my God, what did I do? And, yeah. and it was in you know, the post and, and all the papers and all the, the the cable news networks, and I was they're running me in slow motion like I was a tragic figure. And you know, if you're in slow motion, you're either dead or under indictment. <laughs> and 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 I really worried about it. But and I went online and I went to some Parkinson's chat rooms and I saw the reaction of people. And I was first time I realized I was part of a community. And I, I kind of went, wow, this is. There was there was a lady who talked about going to a, a store, and the guy always looked at her funny when she went into the store. And, and then finally, this one day she was she was kind of shaking and fumbling with her wallet and he said, what's the matter with you? And she said, I have Parkinson's. And he said, oh, like Michael Fox. Yeah. And I went, oh, wow, that's really, that's really heavy. That's really like a thing. You just don't feel alone anymore. You don't feel alone anymore. And, and for me, I felt a real sense, I, I felt this sense of opportunity. You know, people want to hear, when they say, what are you doing in the foundation? Is there anything close? And they want to hear, yeah, we found this pine nut that, that, that if you squeeze the oil out, it's a cure. Well, it doesn't work that way. So we, we, we and we're trying to find, uh, we're very close to a, to finding a biomarker, we've got a big research project going on, which is a way to find uh, 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 an indicator, a common indicator in, in all Parkinson's patients that, that will tip us off before symptoms are, 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 are evident. Um, yeah. Because by the time symptoms are evident, by the time my pinky twitched, 80% of the dopamine producing cells in my brain are already dead. Right. So if we can find a way early on that we can find a marker, um, then, we can, then we can identify um, uh, along the way the progression of the disease and we can treat it earlier, and we can get in there earlier. And if we can find a drug that halts progression and, and, and eliminates symptoms, that may not be, in, it, in the pure sense, a cure, but, but it's as good as a cure. You know, as we go through the, the new year, 2013 now, what are, you, what are you looking forward to? Is there a, a moment that you're hanging on? Well, there's a couple things. I mean, it, uh, like I said, my, my daughters are going to start, they're going to finish uh, high school next, next June, and, and then... Going to going to college and um, that's an amazing thing. That's really, I mean, that's a, like I said, we're babies. And when when I when I started out on this journey and and um, and uh, I'm gonna start the show and, and and do this new show and that's gonna be big and I mean, every year is a, is cool. It's an opportunity. It's amazing. Can we, before we wrap up, a rapid fire anthropology questions your way. What is one food that's your favorite gross food? Um, well, I don't know if it's gross, but I like circus peanuts. Those, those, <laughs> those kind of fake corn oil-based yeah. marshmallow <laughs> things. That are really, you eat like five of them, and they become a rock that you think you'll never pass. <laughs> you hope you never pass. What's the weirdest thing a fan ever said to you? Um, Michael Keaton, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> Who do you have somebody that you have to make peace with? Um... Uh, who do I have to make peace with? I have to make peace with, with uh, I think with, I have to understand people that have fear and ignorance. I mean, just generally, not, I'm not a person, but, but just people that, that, that whose first instinct is to, is to, is to find fault and to, and to, and to cast blame. And, and I just have to realize that, they, that that's fear. And, and, and whenever I come across it, I feel it's a temptation to say to write them off, but but instead to kind of say, how can I how can I just work around that and, and hopefully bring them along? So great to see you, man. It's great to see you, man. Real pleasure.